I just think it's the most interesting thing there is. A good song can be touching, very illuminating, very powerful little gem story. I'm Jim Turr. I'm a songwriter and uh, I want to share with you in this series called Song and Story Weekly, which is actually going to be four times a week, the joy of songwriting. You know, I, I'm not sure many people think about it, but except songwriters, but we listen to songs all day, every day. We appreciate it. We're touched by them at best. And uh, we don't think much about how they're written or we don't think about writing them. And it's actually a fascinating craft. I aspire to write uh, particularly country hits like uh, Tom T. Hall and Bobby Braddock have consistently. That's kind of my brass ring. I want to share with you some songs I've written and recorded, uh, some of which I think are pretty good, and I've, I've had a little success, and give some background. I always think it's interesting uh, with regard to anything, songs or movies or anything, to hear how it was put together, how it was how the thought came about, what the considerations were. I, I just think songwriting is about the most fun you can have. And uh, the rewards are great if you get a good hit country song cut by somebody else, in my case. For the first 31 um, episodes here, I'm just going to take 31 songs from this book that I wrote, actually way back in 1988 called You Got To Be Stupid to Sing Country Music and other unusual song lyrics by Jim Turr. I hope you'll enjoy this series. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to have a new song every day, a little background on the, on the writing, the recording, whatever. And then on Saturday, particularly, I'll emphasize more the songwriting considerations so that the Saturday installments could be used as a forum for thinking about your own songwriting or working on it as a group with or with your family. I think that'd be a great activity. So welcome and let's get to it and here we go. Well I'm really quite honored today to be meeting with a uh, famous uh, rock and roll journalist and author and critic who uh, wanted to interview little old me about this song called uh, Son of a Rabbi Man, which of course is a takeoff on uh, Son of a Preacher Man. Uh, oh, he's here now. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you very much for meeting with me. I, I really appreciate it. I'm honored. My pleasure. Glad to have you. I see my cousin interview you. I see you ask him first. Well, you're, you're both so prominent. You know, I had to one of you had to be first. I, I, I... What made you write this song? Well, I recorded this for an album called uh, Chicken Stock, A Celebration of Peace, Love, and Matzo Balls, which of course was a uh, takeoff on that other famous uh, festival in the 60s. And uh, I had in mind, of course, the Dusty Springfield uh, classic, uh, Son of a Preacher Man, and that's what this was about. Did you have an audience in mind? No, I wouldn't say I had any particular audience in mind. Just kind of nutty people who would appreciate this thing. It's been popular. Is there any value here? I don't know that there's any particular value to it other than comedy, which is very important uh, in these modern times. Would you call this country music for what? It's not really country. It's a takeoff on a Memphis... Uh, Song? Is there any commercial potential here? Why do you ask? I might be able to put in some money. Really? Like how much? A couple thousand. Wow, that'd be great. I could always use some investment. Tell me about the singer. She's fabulous. She is fabulous. Uh, I've never had a better performance out of anybody. This was Kate Bennett, a friend and actress in Santa Fe, the late Kate Bennett, I'm sorry to say. And uh, I believe this was a one-take job, which was her style. She just did the hell out of it. It was fantastic. And uh, I'm honored that I did at least this one song with her. Thank you for your tremendous insight. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm honored to have spoken to you. Let's, let's hear the song, okay? A blonde-haired girl in a Texas town Should have been happy all year round Daddy was a preacher and Mama led the choir 
But I was filled with strange desires. The only thing I ever liked lots of was cream cheese and bagels and matzo. Then into our town came the Rubenstein family, the rabbi and the missus, and Jake and Emily. I first saw Jake in the study hall, standing there looking at me proud and tall. I took one look in those deep brown eyes, and I could tell we were talking member of the tribe. Well, he walked me home after school that day, and of course we took the longest way. His lips were soft and his mind was strong, and to get down to business didn't take long. I said, brother, you don't have to push. I'm on fire like a burning bush, cause I never let nobody hold my hand but that brown-eyed son of a rabbi man. I had always tried to do the proper things, like scarfing down burgers and onion rings, going to the prom with the jocks, wearing saddle shoes and bobbing socks. But my heart knew I was lying. A teeny bopper in the body of a daughter of Zion. The cowboys used to say, dance with me, Sheila. I said, can you sing me Hava Nagila? Did your forefathers carry matzahs on their backs? Well, then why don't you make your exodus, Jack? Because I never let no boy hang around me who wouldn't prefer a bagel to a brownie. They tried to raise me on cornbread and chili, but to me that stuff just tasted silly. Mama said, we tried to raise a good Christian. Now on that Jewish boy, you're hit. Yeah, they tried to raise a little homecoming queen. And now my name is Rubenstein, because I never let nobody hold my hand but that brown-eyed son of a rabbi man. Those were the days I'll always remember. Picnics with Jake in late September. His mom and daddy would come along with us to serve chopped liver and talk and kibbles. But we slipped away from daddy and mommy for our own little picnic of kosher salami. Yeah! Cause I never let nobody hold me tight whose candle couldn't burn for eight days and nights. No, I never let nobody hold my hand but that brown-eyed son of a rabbi man. Woo!